Hello everyone and welcome to another car fix video from Johnny Blogger and today we're going to be working on a Nissan Micra 2000 model K11 1 litre petrol manual and we're going to be changing the near side CV boot so basically the first thing to do is undo the centre wheel nut and take the four wheel nuts off and then jack the car up and get the wheel off Okay, so we've got the wheel off, we've jacked the car back up, got that centre centre nut off now with a 27mm, 27mm deep impact socket, got a split pin out, out of there, get that out first then the nut off. So what I normally do is I'll start stripping it all down. So the first thing I do is undo the caliper bolts, 12mm nut, 12mm socket. Just undo them, get these off. Obviously it's a preference thing, isn't it? How, how much time have you got to do it? You know. There's obviously no rush. Um, this car looks like it's had, had new discs, new discs and uh, pads at some point. As you can see, there's still loads of um, loads of life left in them. They've greased it all up and that, so it looks like done, whoever did that did quite a good job. What I do, I take the caliper off and then what I do is I lubricate these two bolts on the uh, top of the hub, bottom of the shock absorber, uh, undo, lubricate them, I'll get them off, then this hub will drop down and because this nuts off the CV joint should then slide out. You might have to centralise the wheel a bit because it's full left lock at the moment. Um, but when you centralise it, it gives you a bit more, gives you a bit more um, length to get this out. It saves you having to undo all these on the on the. Uh, steering track rod and on the wishbone there the ball joint you don't don't need to undo that some people do but I don't so we got a 17 mil socket and spanner on the first of these two bolts so we've um, slackened it off okay so I'm slackening it off probably get a ratchet in a minute it's easier. All right, let's do that now. Don't need to use that. It's just to undo it. Once it's loose, you can do this. Or again, if you've got one of those super duper impact guns, you just do it with that. It comes off in about two seconds, which is obviously a lot faster. Keep your muscles up. Gotta make sure you don't slip and cut your hand. Injure yourself, which is quite easy to do. Done it on numerous occasions on various car repairs. You force it to come undone, and then it slips, and you cut your hands or arm. So it's always best to uh, be careful. Well, they just pop out once they're loose. Quite easy these. One of my, I've bought quite a lot of these micros and um, one of my favourite cars to work on. Very easy to maintain. Parts aren't that expensive. Okay, so we'll probably just leave that on there for now. Don't fall down. This should come out now. Just 
separate it from there. There you go. Uh, so now, CV joint should come out. Might have to tap it out with a hammer or a plastic plastic mallet. Don't want to damage the spindle here on the end. Otherwise, you won't get a nut back on. Looking at this, it's a bit a bit manky and um, a bit old. Oh, there you go. That came out easy, didn't it? It's uh, deceiving me. The human eye. Right, so I've separated that. I might be able to leave that in there for now. Right, so we want to get this bugger out. So like I said, it's... Um, On the left lock, I'm going to move the steering wheel. So I've moved it just, just past the centre, so it's a bit to the right, not full right lock. So hopefully, it's come out now. And as you can see, it comes out. See, it's not that bad. This can now get out the way. Can give it a little clean up. Just get the crap out of there. So you've got a seal there for the wheel bearing. Yes, there's a seal there. So I'm just you can see all the grease where it's come out of the CV boot. Look, it's gone all over the ball joint is covered in grease. This should just be all clear and a bit rusty. But it's all covered in um, grease where it's been coming out of that CV boot. It's um, a bit manky isn't it? So just spend a bit of time scraping it off. Get it out of the way. If you're a bit fussy like me. If you're not then obviously you don't bother doing this. You just Carry on. I mean these CV joints are prone to going wrong as well and then you normally do both at the same time. What happens when these are worn out, it clicks when you do a left or right turn. So sometimes you get both of them go or just one on one side like the passenger side or the driver's side and then you change that and that. But obviously in this situation this is okay for now. So we're just going to we're just going to uh, change the CV boot. Someone's put cable ties on here. I suppose metal clips are better, but cable ties are alright on these. They're not too bad. So now we can get that off. I mean, I don't know if you can see this, you can see it quite bad, that split there pretty deteriorated and there was a little wet patch somewhere on here so where the grease was coming out so it's just not worth mucking around with they only cost what five ten pound these cv boots you can buy a joint with a cv boot anything from 13 quid 13 quid up to about 30 quid on ebay or wherever car accessory place I would imagine a genuine one, Nissan one, would be a lot more dearer. It's obviously up to you what you want to do, or maybe go to a breakers and get one. That might be quite cheap. If you can get both bits off a, off a uh, scrap yard, or what you could do is just change the whole drive shaft. Just pop the drive shaft out, make sure you collect the gearbox oil coming out of the inner drive shaft. Take the old dry shaft off, put another one on, click it in, top the oil back up, gearbox oil, done. It's not that um, not that difficult. But, you know, there's quite a lot of different ways of doing this. Obviously, the way I'm doing it is probably the cheapest way because I'm not taking the oil out. I haven't got to top it up. I'm not changing the dry shaft. I'm still keeping this because it's all right. 
changing that bit. Okay, so we've got this uh, this perished deteriorated CV boot off. As you can see, it's all cracked on the second bit up from the bottom. Um, can see a little wet patch there. I think that's where the grease was getting out. That's where the MOT inspector has uh, put down a a, a minor minor fault which I thought was a bit harsh I mean if it was split halfway round or completely or just a little bit fair enough like about an inch wide but obviously every MOT inspector is different got the old CV boot off we cut it off and now we're going to get the CV joint off to enable to put the new CV boot on on these it's normally quite easy what you do you just get a a mallet or a plastic hammer mallet it'll either come off straight away or it will be a bummer what you normally do is you just get it straight tap it and if you're lucky it will come off straight away as you can see it didn't there's a little circlip holding it on and uh, they do come off eventually I don't know, we'll try it like that, there you go it's basically a quick tap and then it should come off It's off. See? One CV joint off. Just give it a little clean up. So that's all ready for the new. The, uh, when we put the new boot on, after, we'll put that on after. So you just got to make sure the circlip's on there. Just there. And then there's like a, another one there. Save watching me cutting the CV boot. I've cut it down to the right size. I've cut two bits off of the stretchy CV boot, so that's the right size now. So, what we've got to do now is we just got to slide it on the dry shelf like that, just push it on, and then the next job is to get this uh, CV joint back on I'll give it a little clean and put a bit more grease in it as um, some has escaped where it was split so that should prolong the life of this joint keep it going for a few more years it's ok right so what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to slide this back on it should just clip in that's the plan he says now my lucky won't go in there you go right so it's almost in now just gonna tap it there you go and that's it it's in so the CV joints back on going to do now is uh, put it on the joint the CV boot cut the cable ties or metal clips whatever you want to use and it's done it's quite an easy job it's a bit difficult the first time you do it I suppose but once you've done a few they get easier like I say I've done quite a few of these so I'm quite familiar with the Quite familiar with the micro, and it is a common problem on these the CV boots splitting. I can't think of one I've owned where they haven't split, so 
they do go. Right, so we've got that on there. Push that see the rubber bit on the uh the inner bit, push it right down to the C V joint for now. Because we don't want we don't want that um straining when I put the cable tie on. Right, so I'm just gonna put a cable tie on now. Just need a good pair of pliers. Almost on. I'll make sure it's nice and tight, otherwise it will come off. Come off when you go around a bend. So you get your pair of pliers, pull it as hard as you can. That's it. Do you do a test? You do that, you stretch it left and right. As you can see it's not it's not moving. So that's a good sign. And you just cut it. Make sure you don't split the C V boot. So we've done the outer one, we just got to put the inner one on now. Mm. I'm going to use some slightly smaller length cable ties because otherwise you're wasting the big ones. The um, big ones are quite expensive. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put two on, on the inner one. Don't have to put two on but I'm just going to do it anyway. dry shelf there, that's where it leans on I think, but I'm just going to do this, stop it coming over the edge, there you go, should keep it all perfect, alright, and there you are, it's job done, it's not moving in, it's, it's fine, so the next stage now is to get it back in, which I'm now doing. Got that in there. Gently line that up and then it should slide back in. There you go. Get in that. Sliding out. Make sure you don't cross thread it though. The nut, otherwise you'll be a bugger. Right, so that's on. I'll tighten it up more in a minute. Let me just get the basics done. Get this little bugger lined up. Okay, that's going to go in very easy. Only 
place it will. There you go. There you go, it's in. Let me just get the uh, nuts back on. So basically you just do those two nuts, do them back up, do that up. And then you put your caliper back on, put the brake pads in, put the caliper back on. And then you put your road wheel on and you're done. Your little split pin's got to go in there as well. to do again if you've got one of those super duper impact guns it ain't gonna do that is it well you could under tighten it up that side I suppose go downwards that's probably better there you go gets it a bit tighter One's a little bugger. Just make sure it's nice and tight. Give it on the final oomph. There you go. Right, so they're tightened up. Get your caliper back on now. Brake pads. And literally just slide in. Second job. Gotta be one of the easiest cars to change the brake pads, I think. These you don't even need to push the piston in because it's all it's all set up correctly, isn't it? So they just go straight back in. There you go. A bit of that. 12mm bolts. Easy peasy. That's done. Brake pipe's alright. It's not spill damage. Brake hose rather. So if this are in good nick, they ain't that old. Someone's changed them. So basically just gotta get the wheel on now. watching this video I'll be doing the CV boot a stretchy CV boot I find they're better than the normal ones and uh, if you like this video thumbs up click the thumbs up the like button and if you want to subscribe to my channel it's free it doesn't cost any money you just click the subscribe button on the top right of the screen, the red bit. And there's a notification bell next to the subscribe button. If you click on that, that will notify you when I release any future videos. So until then, thanks for watching.